people. Thank you. Perfect. You may be seated. Now please welcome on stage Southwest Regional Board President Sandra Thiederman. That is such a great way to start our graduations. I think we should do that every time. What a treat it is to be here and see so many people that look like new faces. Could you raise your hand if you haven't been here before? Wow, super cool. The welcome, welcome to all of you. We hope to see you again. Uh, and in that connection, I do have to confess, we do not want to lose track of you. So I think you've noticed that in your brochure, in your uh, program, there's this simple blue slip of paper. And it would be so lovely if you could fill it out. And if you take it to one of the booths right outside the partition, you will get one of these really nice veterans buttons to wear throughout the weekend and maybe every year henceforward. They're really nice and if you're a veteran be sure to identify yourself because you'll get a very a special one. And if you want to do that don't hesitate to get up during the program and go do it. We're very very informal here. Um, let me introduce a couple more of my board members that are here. I was kind of trying to spot. We're Jane Rieger over here to my left. I know we've got Jay Scribner, who's a member of our, uh, and our ancillary advisory committee. And Jay, if you could raise your hand wherever you are. I know there's another, oh, there he is, there he is. And I know there's another board member here who I'm keeping secret, and I'm going to introduce him a little bit later on. Who else is there that I missed? Okay, okay, so glad that you're here. You know, um, we're have, as I said, a really special weekend here, the Veterans Day weekend, but we're also on the brink of Thanksgiving. And what those two do is put us in a position of having the opportunity to thank an awful lot of people for what they've done. And this is a little bit personal from my end, but I have to tell you, when it comes to thanking someone or a group of people that has done something ongoing, something really difficult, I feel so inadequate doing it. Do you know what I mean? It's like you go, oh, thank you, or you write a little note, thank you, but how do you thank? I'm thinking of the Canine Companions group. How do you thank a volunteer, many of whom are sitting among you, that gives up their time and their energy 
to perform a task that isn't necessarily their idea of a good time, right? Maybe it's sort of fun with their friends, but cleaning the campus or, or digging in the yard, not all of it is cuddling a brand new puppy. How do you thank people that do that year after year after year after year? And how do you thank those puppy raisers? You'll learn a little bit more about this, but um, the puppy raisers are another sort of category of volunteer, many of which overlap with the others, by the way. And we take this puppy, utterly adorable, like I think I saw, did I see a real young one around here someplace? Aha, real young one there in the back. And they are so delicious and wonderful, they do keep you up at night, but who really cares because they're so cute, right? Fall in love with them and keep them for a year and a half, training them, loving them, showing them that learning is a fun thing, teaching them who's in charge while, while giving them confidence in who they are. And then at the end of that 18 months, they walk into Canon Companions down there and hand the dog over and that's it. I mean, how do you thank a person that does that? How do you thank our staff that I still say this every time I'm up here. I think the staff of Canine Companions for Independence kind of puts up with a lot from us volunteers, right? I mean, they bring an excellence and a professionalism and knowledge to every single thing they do. These are very, very special people, and they've given us this opportunity. How do we thank our graduates? You know, our graduates are always thanking us, but come on. These people sometimes leave their families, disrupt their lives, come to Canine Companions for two weeks to participate in a thing called team training. You're going to hear more about it. And I got to tell you, graduates in the room, it ain't easy, is it? It is not. It is high level skills that you are learning. And many of us at this stage of life, we haven't been in school in a long time, so it's, oh my gosh, I'm going to have a test. And it's true. They do that for us. And then they take the dog back into their lives. They keep it happy. They keep it healthy. And they keep it working in a way that really spreads the word about our mission. How do you thank people like that? And then there's our donors, big donors and small donors. How do you thank them? Sometimes it's $5, sometimes it's $5,000, sometimes it's 50, but all of you t dig deep and, and sometimes you're giving them to us over someone else, some other group that you might love. And sometimes you're making a real sacrifice and it's difficult to thank all of these Canine Companions people from my heart and from the heart of the board of the Southwest region. The only comfort for me is that you know, you people we are thanking, that in your heart and in your head, you have done something really cool. You have contributed to our ability to provide these animals free of charge to children and adults and that it is the highest standard in the industry. You know that and I hope that helps you to feel the thank you that we have to give you. Yeah, but it gets worse because, you know, how do you thank a veteran? I mean, how do you thank a person that has risked life and limb so that people like me can live the life I want to live in the country I want to live it. And what about all the veterans that they weren't in combat, but they walked away from their families to sign up for something here stateside and gave up some of their dreams that they might have had to support the infrastructure that allows the rest to go overseas and fight the war. And that one's really tough to thank. So, frankly, I went on the web and I thought, I just put in thanking or something to kind of see what kind of popped up because I knew there was something there. And I came up with a quote from President John Fitzgerald Kennedy that I'd never seen before. And it has to do with gratitude. And to paraphrase it, he says, 
as you voice your appreciation, don't forget that the highest level of gratitude lies not merely in the words that you use, but in the values that you live that are reflected in those words. So then I'm thinking, what are the values that have to do with being, I'm not a veteran, I can't speak to this personally, but what are the values that they live? There's courage, there's sacrifice, there's excellence. And when I looked at those values, I realized Canine Companions is living those values too. So isn't that really the very best of the gratitude that we can show these wonderful veterans? So speaking of veterans, I am now going to introduce a gentleman uh, who is central to Canine Companions for Independence. This is a man that most of you know. Uh, he is a three-time graduate from the program. Uh, he, is, uh, he has a degree in psychology. Okay, so here's the cool thing about introducing this guy. I've introduced him a lot, so every time I do it, I kind of go, well, what am I going to say now? I'm just going to say the same old thing. So I went back in again and looked at his bio. There's all this stuff there. I never knew he did that. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it goes on and on. This is a man that is a member of the Southwest Board of Canon Companions for Independence. He's former vice president. He is responsible for the veterans initiative within the region. He is a man that received the national, national, Canine Companion, he hates it when I do this. Are you hating this, Lance, so much? Uh, he hates it. The National Volunteer Award for Canine Companions. He's our past volunteer coordinator, veteran liaison. It kind of gets boring and goes on and on and on. Now, the other piece, and I see now you can tell I'm kind of inching toward my notes because this is when I knew I was going to need them because I know I'm going to forget something really important. Um, yeah, I think I got all the stuff I particularly wanted to say. But the other piece is that this fellow is, as I said, a three-time graduate. Um, he's got all kinds of athletic things. Now, I would go into those, Lance, and I know they're important to you, but I don't understand them. So I, I don't know what they are. So I don't know how to do that. But I do know one, and I will introduce him on this note. It was two weeks ago, maybe three, when Lance cycled all the way from San Francisco to La Jolla. Now, people, I don't get that, right? With the Challenged Athletes Foundation and his current canine companion assistance dog rode along on the trip. So what a lovely image with that I would like to bring to the stage, a veteran and member of the Southwest Board, Lance Weir, and his third canine companion's dog, who he will introduce. Sorry about that, don't hate me, okay. Don't forget to tell them your dog's name. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Got it. Cool. Got to read it. Wow. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, Sandra. Um, I don't know what to say. That was, that was, uh, very nice of you, and uh, caught off guard a little bit by that. But uh, do any any of you want to try to follow Sandra on stage? Just let me know. I can show you my notes, and you can take it over. Um, we're gonna miss Sandra. She's gonna be uh, leaving us as board president, but we'll continue to give her undying support to this organization. And I know that she's become not only somebody that's taught me a lot, but but also a great friend and. Very thankful to have her. So we give her a round of applause, please. So good afternoon. Welcome. Um, happy Veterans Day weekend. It's a very special, special graduation. I think we get to have uh, this November, and and it's awesome to see all of you here in the crowd tonight. Um, are there any veterans in the crowd? Would you raise your hand, please?
Actually, uh, would, would you stand so that I could make you out just a little bit better? Thank you. Thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to be asked to come up here and, and uh, be a part of this next part of the program. Uh, Sandra mentioned to you that uh, when I first started with CCI in 2006, one of the initial things that I was given as a project was uh, to help raise more awareness to our military uh, area here in, in Southern California. It's so large. And, and we created an event and, and had a, a little open house one day. And, and from that one event, we now have what's uh, called our Veterans Initiative through the whole um, CCI uh, national um, national project. So, really excited about that. Um, we've also started a tradition uh, at graduations to uh, to recognize uh, a veteran that's in the class, and, and we have one today. And, and we would like to uh, to uh, to coin that veteran. Um, and I would like to. Uh, to, sorry, my eyes are watery and, and I can't read my phone, so <laughs> you have to put up with me for a second. I didn't anticipate that. Uh, there's a lot of history and tradition throughout our branches of service, and one of those being the coining of a soldier, sailor, airman, or marine. Challenge coins have been used as a way to boost morale, identify allegiance, and are a great, great way to extend one's appreciation by saying thank you. Um, if we could have Army, PFC, Kelsey, Stromberg, please come to the stage. So this is where I hijack the mic for just a minute. <laughs> Through our weekend, you're more than likely going to see and hear stories about veterans, young and old. You should. Stories, Elijah. Oh, by the way, Sandra, everybody, this is Elijah, my third <laughs> service dog. Hey, buddy. Good. You should. Stories of dedication and heroism and love for our country. I love them all, but I might perk up just a, tr a little bit when I hear stories about Marines, the ones of our older Marines, the privilege to be around and get to know one and come before us and, and feel the history that they provide us. Stories like the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir during the Korean War where warriors fought the enemy for months. They fought the enemy for months in freezing temperatures, reaching as low as minus 36 degrees. Process that for a second. The toughest of the tough, and we have one of those in our audience today, one of those Marines that I'm blessed to call a friend and a brother. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at an extra motivation and inspiration for your weekend. You have to go no further than right here. Corporal Irv Spector, could you stand, please?
Thank you, Irv, for what you've done for, for all of us, and especially me. And now I'd like to turn this over to, it's my pleasure to introduce our Southwest Puppy Program Manager, Becky Hine. He does a lot of yoga. <laughs> Good morning slash afternoon. Canine Companions puppies are not just born as assistance dogs. They are raised for this special purpose. They are molded and shaped carefully by volunteers called puppy raisers. These amazing people take an eight-week-old puppy, socialize them, teach them 30 commands, and fund all of their care and supplies. After loving this puppy for a year and a half, they let them go back to Canine Companions to fulfill their destiny of becoming an assistance dog. We celebrate our puppy raisers today because they are doers. How many people have sat and thought, oh, it would be nice to raise an assistance dog for someone? Here today, we have 41 folks with passion and follow through. They filled out the application, they did the interview, they went through the home screening and puppy proofing. There were sleepless nights, I'm sure. There were trips to the vet. Every two weeks, they went to classes to improve their handling skills and teach this lively little bundle of fur manners and commands. Puppy raisers, we are so proud of you today. You have taken on a huge volunteer commitment and made it happen. If every person in this country did the same to help a good cause, just think what our world could be. Let's all continue to make the world a better place, one puppy at a time. Now I invite you all to watch the screen for a slideshow commemorating the journey of puppies and puppy raisers in this class.
Happy raisers of matriculating dogs, please line up to my left. While the puppy raisers gather, I would like to recognize a few additional puppy raisers. The following dogs were selected for the breeding program. Colt III, who was raised by Heidi Heineke of Lafayette, Colorado. Eleven, who was raised by Don and Belinda Honker of Oro Valley, Arizona. Hunter the Sixth, who was raised by inmates at the Bent County Correctional Facility of Los Animas, Colorado. Mulberry, who was raised by Liz and Craig Connors of San Diego, California. And Veronica the Fifth, raised by Jane Gorman of San Diego, California. And the following dog graduated from the Hearing Dog Program, Deandra, who was raised by Patty O'Rourke Andrews of Oceanside, California. Thank you all. We would like to recognize our puppy raisers for a job well done. Presenting our honorary ribbons today, our special guests, Susie and Vince Giovinazzo. Please join me on stage. First, we would like to congratulate Alexis the Fifth, raised by Robin Rodano from Encinitas, California. This is the first puppy that she has raised. Augustine the Second was raised by Karen Silvis and family from Encinitas, California. This is the second puppy they have raised. Bambi the Fifth was raised by Shayna Bushio from Payson, Utah, and family. This is the first puppy that she has raised. Buck the Fifth was raised by Patty Barrows and Sheila Lupton from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. The 14th puppy for Sheila and the fifth for Patty. Cody the Fifth was raised by Sterling and Cher Code from North Ogden, Utah. This is the first puppy they have raised. Constance the Second was raised by Lynn Elliott of Vista, California, and Terry McCartney of San Marcos, California. The eleventh puppy for Terry and the tenth for Lynn. Davis the Fifth was raised by Lori Dunn from Oceanside, California. This is lucky number thirteen. Duffy the second was raised by Liz Kern from Carlsbad, California. This is the fourth puppy that she has raised. <laughs> Ellie the seventh was raised by Chungin Park and Sean Gian from Irvine, California. This is the first puppy that they have raised. <laughs> Jillian the fourth was raised by Kelly Keesling from Arvada, Colorado. This is the third puppy that she has raised. Goji was raised by Heidi Brandel and Scott Ecker and family from Newport Beach, California. This is the first puppy that they have raised. Gumbo was raised by the Kemp family from Denver, Colorado. This is the first puppy that they have raised. Hope the Seventh was raised by Carolyn Megan Paddock from San Diego, California. This is the first puppy that they have raised. Inga the Fifth was raised by Jan Ford from Santee, California. This is puppy number 11. Ivory the Fourth was raised by Marilyn and Brittany Fullen and Helper from San Diego, California. This is puppy number 11. Jingle the Third was raised by Carol Jean Kennedy and Roger Lee Bedard from Anthem, Arizona. This is the first puppy that they have raised. Joplin, who has already turned in, was raised by Mary Lee Bensman of Buena Vista, Colorado, and Susan Fishman of Leadville, Colorado. They did raise a real puppy. Um, this is the seventh dog for Mary Lee and the fourth for Susan. 
Julep the fourth was raised by Marianne Bonder from Cherry Hills Village, Colorado. This is the second puppy that she has raised. Julianne was raised by Judy Sharola of Oceanside, California and Yvonne McCammon of Vista, California. The first puppy for Judy and the second puppy for Yvonne. Kai the fifth was raised by Pat Lawson and Michelle Connors from Queen Creek, Arizona. This is the 12th puppy that they have raised. <laughs> Kipper the fourth was raised by Eileen and Ron Seaver of San Clemente, California. Lillian Glenn Jones from Layton, Utah and started at the Navcon Brig Miramar of San Diego. The sixth puppy for the Seavers and Jones family and the 57th for the Brig. <laughs> Levi the seventh was raised by Kay Moore and the Ninberg family from San Diego, California. The seventh puppy raised by Kay and the fourth raised by the Ninbergs. Lincoln the seventh raised by Rick and Janet Williams and Jamie Stewart from Fallbrook, California. This is puppy number seven. Lila was raised by Melissa Billingsley, Clifford Meredith, and Madison from Tehachapi, California. The sixth puppy for Melissa and Madison and the first puppy for Clifford. Marnie was raised by the Navcon Brig Miramar from San Diego, California. This is the 59th puppy they have raised. Meeks was raised by Laurel Prudhomme from Colorado Springs, Colorado. This is the first puppy that she has raised. Noel the seventh was raised by Jennifer Ando and Bernard Wagman from Redondo Beach, California. And Doreen and John Mayo from Huntington Beach, California. This is the third puppy for Jennifer and Bernard and the 11th puppy for the Mayo family. Nolina the second was raised by Isabella Marganska from Escondido, California. This is the first puppy that she has raised. Ocean the seventh was raised by Kieran and Hallie Webster from San Luis Obispo, California. This is the first puppy that they have raised. Raven the fifth was raised by Eileen and George Lukes from Mesa, Arizona. This is the first puppy they have raised. Regan the fourth was raised by Ann and Park Boyer from San Diego, California. This is the fourth puppy that they have raised. Redford the third was raised by Lori Nitani and Phil Cruz from Escondido, California, and Dina Mall and Adam Derigish from Hermosa Beach, California. Puppy number four for Lori and Phil, second for Dina, first for Adam. Rosabelle was raised by Allie and Brad Griggan from Ogden, Utah. This is puppy number two. Shirley was raised by Dorothy Sticks from Chandler, Arizona. This is the first puppy she has raised. Tarka was raised by Donna, Steve, and Brooke Budman from Foothill Ranch, California. This is the third puppy that they have raised. Valentina the second was raised by Terry and Joe Stambaugh from Redondo Beach, California. This is number 16. <laughs> well deserved. Velvet the fifth was raised by Susan and Bob Brennecke from Bernalillo, New Mexico. The second puppy that they have raised. Waldo the fourth was raised by Lisa Sawyers from Coppell, Texas, the second puppy that she has raised. We would also like to recognize Walker the sixth, raised by Lisa Moriarty from Chandler, Arizona, the fourth puppy that she has raised. And finally, Willa the seventh, raised by Shelly Kalin from Glendale, Arizona, this is puppy number four.
We owe all of our puppy raisers our most sincere appreciation. Please join me in one more round of applause for our matriculating class, August 2019. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Chuck Dickinson, the Southwest Regional Training Manager. Thank you, Becky. Hi, good evening, or good afternoon. My name is Chuck Dickinson, and I have the absolute honor and pleasure to introduce to you our newest canine companion um, instructor, Stephanie Yoakum. <laughs> Stephanie, please join me on stage. <laughs> Come stand over here, Stephanie. So I get to tell you a little bit about Stephanie while she stands up here, very uncomfortable. But I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. Stephanie is a graduate of Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, where she attended on a full ride golf scholarship and was a communication studies major. She and her family have raised seven dogs for Canine Companions since 2010. In 2015, Stephanie began working for Canine Companions for Independence as an instructor assistant in Santa Rosa, California, and in February of 2016, she transferred to the Southwest region and began a three-year apprenticeship program. That apprenticeship included rotations through various departments within Canine Companions, providing knowledge of the entire organization, as well as learning the skills needed to train assistance dogs of all different temperaments and abilities. This apprenticeship culminated in October when Stephanie tested and successfully passed both her instructorship, written, and practical test. The dogs she trained looked amazing. <clears throat> the path to instructorship bears great responsibility. Stephanie has spent three years and thousands of hours around 8,320 to be exact, working towards this goal. Canine Companions trainers are faced daily with making sure that they are doing the best for the dogs in our care, the potential graduates of our program, the puppy raisers, and the donors of this great organization. Our instructors do not take this task lightly. They understand that hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars have already been invested into the dogs they are training. As an organization, we have an obligation to uphold high standards and quality placements in order to enhance the independence of individuals we serve through this human-animal bond. This can be a tremendous, tremendous amount of pressure for our staff. Stephanie handled this pressure by showing great perseverance and passion for the mission every day in all that she does. Stephanie, you are one of the hardest, most dedicated workers that I have had the privilege to coach. Your bubbly personality, willingness to assist wherever you can, and your love for putting stickers on your dog's notes when they have a great session make me smile every day. And honestly, she put stickers whether they had a good session or not. <laughs> so in honor of your next string that you'd be picking up, I have started you with this sticker collection yeah. as well as your CCI instructor certification pin. <laughs> Stephanie did not get here alone. I would like to thank her fellow colleagues her parents, Melaine and Stan, and her family and friends for their support of Stephanie, and in turn, their dedication to the mission of this incredible organization. I am positive the countless graduates whose lives have been enhanced and influenced by Stephanie's dedication would also share their thanks with her today. Stephanie, my last words of wisdom to offer you are, always look for opportunities to learn. Stay humble, be patient, and train like someone's independence counts on it.
Being an instructor is more than training dogs. It's about changing lives. Please join me today in celebrating Stephanie and all her hard work and accomplishment as she officially becomes a Canine Companions for Independence instructor. At this time, sit back and relax and get to meet our graduates. Um, my name's Christy and I am teamed up with Nubbin. I work for the Fullerton Police Department and uh, I'm a community service officer and I work with our community services bureau doing community events. Uh, Nubbin will be assisting me with working with victims of crime and witnesses of crime, whether it be trauma or minor, um, incidents to just comfort and be there and help them through the process. I decided to try to get a facility dog because I had seen the work that three other police facility dogs had done and they've been doing great work helping victims and witnesses of crimes and in being involved in the community and bringing, bridging that gap between the police department and the, the public. So Nubbin will be uh, the Fullerton Police Department's first facility dog and everybody is just so excited so I've been asking for photos and videos and told them they had to wait, uh, so they'll get to meet Nubbin today at graduation. Hi, my name is Michael Triola, and this is my service dog, Legacy. On pre-match day, uh, I pretty much knew it was going to be Legacy because um, I think the last two days uh, before that, um, when we did one-on-one -on -one interaction, was pretty much just with him, and he was just, he was really lovey-dovey. I immediately knew he loved getting his belly rubbed, so that was like an instant connection. Um, but I was, I was actually, they announced me last, uh, so it was a lot of anticipation. I was just like, come on, tell me already. Um, but I was super excited once they announced his name. Um, and then he just came right up to me, his whole back end was wagging, and he was just really excited. We were both, you know, really excited that we, we got matched with each other. With this dog, I definitely am going to have a sense of newfound independence, freedom to just do things on my own, um, eventually get my own place, be able to live on my own comfortably, and confidence, just being being a pack leader for him, and, and you know, being more assertive. I'm Nicole Boyle, this is Tim, and this is our dog Yachty. We're hoping Yachty will help Tim with transitions and the anxiety around transitions and giving him good deep pressure and helping him. Maybe they were showing us how he can play cards and do flashcards for math and have a longer focus while he's sitting there doing homework or doing different um, activities. Yachty has such a calm personality, it's been wonderful. Um, he has been a very he's relaxing, been a very it's been really great to see, really see great Tim being able to run around and be his wild, wild and crazy self and, and Yachty doesn't get caught up in it but when they do play fetch they have a really fun time and he's definitely, when we get him outside and get him going, they really enjoy that but he's so relaxed and calm when we're in the house that it helps de-escalate all the excitement. Pre-match day was very exciting. Fighting. Tim was not Tim was really, not interested, really in interested in getting to know any of the dogs until dogs Wednesday until morning. Wednesday I couldn't morning. tell where he was coming from. He was like, it's not, I don't want to know any of them until I know mine, kind of thing. And um, so he seemed not so terribly, seemed engaged not terribly engaged prior to Wednesday morning. And then when we did pre-match, he told me that he was hoping it was Yachty and he was super calm compared to the other visits we'd had with dogs. He was super calm. Petting him, telling him that he's what our family needed, he's right? He belonged in our family. My name is Sherry Tapman, and this is Mitchell. Um, I am in private practice. I work with children um, with trauma, and I contract through our Child Advocacy Center that's just been recently opened, and the need has been overwhelming. Mitchell will be working with the kids. Um, they are so excited that he's coming. Um, 
they have been asking and asking when I'm getting that dog. And so he is going to be interacting with them. He's going to be the first person that they meet. I plan on taking Mitchell out to the lobby and having him greet all the kids. We're working on a high five so he can do that. Coming to therapy is always such a hard thing for children to do. I'm asking them to come in here and I'm asking them to talk about things that they have tried so hard to forget about. And just to have just this, to have, have, have this, Mitchell have, have here Mitchell with here. them is, with them is overwhelming is to me. Overwhelming it, it's going to, to make, it's going to make such a difference. Such a he difference. is totally going to totally change lives. He, life. he, really he, he really is. He really is. He's so special. He's so special. And, and we'll look at him all at regal him. here. All regal Throughout here. my day to day life, my day -to -day um, life um, I'm a college I'm student, so I'm always out and about going to classes. And then I also work on campus, so she'll be accompanying me to classes and to work as well, as I have a very busy lifestyle. So, yeah. Her personality fits in with my lifestyle. Absolutely amazing. Um, the trainers did a great job the matching her to me because she's so like ready to so, go, 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 go. But go, go, you know, at times where I need to just relax, she is great at doing that and just wanting to cuddle. So, yeah. pre match day was an absolutely amazing day. Yeah. Um, I did work with her a lot, but I did work with other dogs and. You know, I was really glad I was matched with her, and I'm pretty sure everyone else um, here at team training was ecstatic about their dog. So, yeah. I'm really excited about my future with Shadow. She'll help me continue with college and graduate and just officially start our lives together. So, yeah. I am a clinical psychologist. I work in a um, K through 12 school in Colorado. And I work with students that have learning related um, challenges, as well as those that have some social and emotional issues as um, something that they contend with. And we are going to be working together to help uh, those children. And I'm also in the process of developing a humane education program. And I'm hoping that Benye can help me be um, sort of the um, point dog for that, if you will, and to help me get the word out about that. I really have loved every part of team training. It's it's really uh, difficult. Um, it's humbling. It's challenging. It's um, funny. And um, it's really just a, an amazing experience to be with a group of people that were complete strangers when you walked in the room. And then, you know, within a few days, you all are learning from each other and helping each other and learning a lot about how to partner with the dog and meet them where they are. That's awesome. So I was so excited on pre-match day and I'm really just so joyful and happy for everybody that was there. But then, you know, when Sarah walked up with Beignet, it was just like so incredibly meaningful and special to me to think, wow, they are entrusting me with this dog and this dog is going to to really help change the lives of many children. And I just, I don't know, I felt overwhelmed with emotion and gratitude. You know, I think, you know, I think with Beignet, I can now reach students that before I couldn't have. And she will provide that bridge um, and open some doors for me that um, wouldn't be possible without her loving presence there. I'm Megan. I'm Megan. This is Emery. Emery is five years old. She's in kindergarten. She was diagnosed with cerebral palsy or CP at one year old. And this is our new boy skit. So we have a really fun story. What I mean was a little over four. Uh, we actually up in Newport Beach were visiting my parents and we ran into one of the puppy raisers. And he has a dog that is now out of his, his match working, his match working. Um, pine um, and so pine. we and so he we, saw us and he, he came up to us and said may I introduce my dog pine my dog she's a service pine. dog in training, dog in training. Um, can, I um, can I introduce him to your daughter and it was instant and it was love instant and love. so uh, he gave and us a card so, uh, and he said now your job is to not lose this and when she turns five apply for the program apply for the program so on her first birthday we reconnected online and applied for the program and here we are so we're, we're looking forward to him, looking helping forward with him helping with so many things. So many things. Um, she um, is she very hesitant is sometimes very when it comes to doing her physical therapy. Her physical therapy. And, so and so we're learning that, that there are some really unique ways, really ways, ways to incorporate him, to him into, her into her therapy. Whether it's him actually whether assisting him with him it, assisting or, with or it, even as simple as we're going to make little flashcards with her different exercises. And we'll have him pick a card. And whatever's on the card, we'll skip said. That's what therapy we're going to work on. And we're also excited for 
for the social gap because them are being so loving and social and vocal. One of the things that's really difficult is children will approach us, her peers, and they'll talk to me. And they'll talk to and me. they'll act and like and like doesn't like know how to talk or doesn't know how to interact. And I already have this beautiful and picture this beautiful in, picture my, mind in my mind of how they're going to come to initially come see Skip, and, she'll be, and she'll, she'll be the one to introduce him. She'll be the one, and they'll be this. Aha! She wants to talk to me. She wants to tell me. She wants to. And I just get to fade out of the picture, which is glorious for her social interaction. For her social interaction. Pre-match day was in some ways my favorite. Some ways so far. So far. Super super emotional. Super super emotional. We had a um, suspicion had that it might be Skip that it because be we interacted skip, with him a lot the night before. And I think the thing that, I think the thing that made me think it was likely to be him was the evening before the evening he was before, laying just like this with Emery and she was petting on his ears. And she stopped and she, and told, she, me, and she told me, Mom, I really like this dog. Can we invite him to be part of our family so I can love him forever? And I still get teary thinking of her saying that. And then on pre-match the thought of, that, day, just thought of that just came flooding back when flooding uh, back yeah when they're playing the calm music, yeah, the calm they, bring music they bring skip out to us and her little face was just so happy so happy so it was it was an incredible moment my name is kelsey and this is doc doc will actually be helping with a lot of things on a daily basis um because of the neuropathy and like arthritis in my hands um i drop things a lot so he'll pick up the things that i drop give them back to me he can um, retrieve my meds and also like if I'm having a migraine he can go and turn off the light for me. I was so happy you know I was working with a couple dogs and I was just really happy to match with Doc and um, like a little story I'll share. My husband was a medic in the army and his nickname was Doc. Everyone called him Doc. Um, he actually passed away in 2017 so when I got matched with a dog named Doc like out of all the names I was just like wow like you know and I was talking to my mom and stuff and just like that's like a like a sign you know like maybe he sent him to help me and I just thought it was so neat I'm just really looking forward like when I when I bring Doc home I'm just really looking forward to um, you know just obviously that you know will help with all the things that I mentioned and like that will help lessen the pain that I have and just the companionship also and like I realized like while I'm here like even just like having him around just makes me really happy which that in its in of itself like really helps with the pain too so Nikki will be helping so Nikki will be helping Eli with something, something that he has a hard time with has a hard time getting with. from Getting let's from, say the house to the car, the, the car to, to car, school, the car to school, or anywhere or we go. He likes to flop. We go. He likes to flop. And he doesn't like to move. And he doesn't and like he's to super move. Motivated and he's by super dogs. motivated by dogs. He loves dogs. He thinks every dog was put on earth. Every dog was put for on him. Earth. For and him. he's already and just he's in the already short, just in you know a couple short, days that we've had. Couple days that we've had. Nikki really formed a great bond. Really formed a great bond. Loves him to Loves him to death. And we've already we've already this little harness there. He holds on to that. He holds on to that. While Rob. Robin and um, I, while Robin um, and I um, walk, and he just walk, and he just walks right along, and walks right along. So many things, but this is one thing. But this is one thing that we really, really love. That we really, I'm excited, really to love. I'm excited to use Nikki to help Eli gain independence. You know, have Eli his speech. Even while we've been here for a little over a week, his speech has developed. He wants to say words that maybe he wasn't saying before, and I think that will continue to grow as we utilize Nikki in therapy. We had to split up the first week a lot. Um, I had to go home or Rick had to go home so we were one-on-one -on -one with Eli and the dog through the night. And one night that I was here, Eli was sleeping in. And um, so I was trying to be quiet. And um, I got Eli or Nikki up to feed and go potty and Eli sits up very groggy, puckers his lips out. Nikki comes up, kisses him, and then Eli goes, oh, Nikki, I'm so tired. And then lays back down. <laughs> just like they had already, you know, they're like fast and they're like, I'm just, okay, I just need to see my buddy and I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> what I am most looking what forward, I am most to, looking is forward just, to is um, just, um, I, th I think that I th Nikki will I make that Nikki will the make perfect addition the perfect to our addition to our already large already family, large family, and and when we go, 
when home, we go home, I think that Nikki will be there, not just for Eli, not just for Eli, but for me, for but Robin. For me, for we Robin, have other kids with special needs. We have other needs, kids with special needs. And, um, and um, I mean, it's just all about love, I mean, it's just all and, about comfort love and comfort and healing and healing and and, and service. I mean, and it's just service. really, I mean, it's just it's, really, it's a handy it's, tool. It's a handy I mean, tool. Some of the things that we've already been. That we've already um, been um, trained to do trained with Nikki to do with is Nikki really going to make our really life gonna make more, our simple, simple, more simpler, simpler and, um, and I mean and, um, it's I mean, for independence it's and, for I independence. Is, and I think as, as uh, Eli grows as, uh, up he'll Eli have a dog up, with him all the time with him, and just to see that relationship nurture and mature I think I mean you can't put a price tag on that I think it's just phenomenal I think it's just phenomenal Okay, that is always the toughest act to follow. <laughs> um, good afternoon, you guys. My name is Amy Kinsella, and I am an instructor here at K9 Companions for Independence. And I had the absolute pleasure of teaching this team training class alongside instructors Sarah Nagahosian, Stephanie Yokum, and apprentice instructor Eli Gerard. This means I also had the honor of training some of the most good-looking dogs in preparation for this very day. As a trainer here, graduation is filled with many emotions. We form strong bonds with the dogs, as well as close relationships with the graduates, and those are never easy goodbyes. But more importantly, we are excited for the graduates, we are proud of the dogs, and we are so thankful for the community of puppy raisers, volunteers, and donors who put their time and effort into fulfilling the mission of Canine Companions for Independence. So where do I even begin? I'll begin with the basics, and that is that I absolutely love team training. It's an experience that's nearly impossible to put into words, but once you go through it, you'll understand. For me, team training encompasses the mission of Canine Companions and it is an opportunity to see firsthand all the hard work pay off. There is a lot of preparation that goes on behind the scenes to prepare for this experience. On the graduate side, they've gone through a lengthy application process with requests, reference forms, phone interviews, in-person interviews, waiting and anticipating at each step along the way, hoping to one day receive a call saying that we have a dog that could possibly serve their needs. All the while, we have our puppy raisers, who are laying the foundation for these pups, teaching them how to learn, socializing them to new environments, instilling love and confidence in every interaction. And there are the trainers who polish up the dog's basic floor work, teach them advanced commands, play with them, love on them, and make sure that a life of service is just what their hearts desire. And then there's the rest of the staff, volunteers, donors, who are working tirelessly behind the scenes to get all the logistics in line and ready. Whether it's bathing dogs, cleaning crates, providing lunches, raising funds, the list could go on and on. And all of this leads us to team training. For those of you who don't know, team training is an intense two-week course where students are matched with an assistance dog, requiring them to put their lives on hold and devote their time, energy, and effort into this exciting yet slightly exhausting journey. These two weeks are filled with lectures, practice sessions, field trips, lots and lots of quizzes, a written and practical exam with just a little cuddle time sprinkled in. These students are challenged every step of the way in order to become the best dog handlers that they can be. To our graduates, you did it. What a journey it has been. But before I extend a huge congratulations, I want you just for a second to think back to day one. Do you remember fumbling through the command sequence, tripping over your own two feet as you walked circle after circle after circle around that training room? Do you remember mishandling carpet dog, white knuckling your leash, voice shaking and hands trembling as you tried to make sense of all of the information that we were throwing your way? I do. It was less than ideal, less than perfect, but rather we'll call it a beautiful mess. But you did it. You showed up, you gave 110% effort every day just like we asked, 
and we laughed alongside each other as we addressed your weaknesses and each and every one of you pushed forward in order to become the best that you could be. And then do you remember the first time you worked with a dog that you will soon have on the end of your leash? The first time you locked eyes? I do. With each interaction, the bond between you and your dog grew stronger. The dogs were no longer looking to us as their trainers, but rather to you as their partner, their protector, and their forever. Over the short span of two weeks, you have blossomed into confident and successful assistance dog teams. To our service teams, our hope for you is that of independence, that with every dropped item and heavy door, you are met with a pair of big brown eyes staring back at you saying, I got this. To our skilled companions, our hope for you is that of joy, that transitions are easier, therapies are more fun, and that the recipient is now able to have a forever buddy, and also probably the coolest buddy that any kid has ever seen by their side. To our facility teams, our hope for you is that of comfort. The work that these dogs do will start here, but really take off once you get back home and start interacting with hundreds of children. Through their gentle nature, they'll be able to be involved in therapies that will make some daunting tasks seem a little more doable with a canine companion by their side. As we celebrate in this moment, we are celebrating just the beginning of a beautiful partnership. As you continue this journey with your new assistance dog, if ever there is a moment where you doubt yourself, please just remember what I said to you guys on day one about these dogs. But now as you join the Canine Companions for Independence family, these words apply to you. That somewhere out there, there is a puppy raiser, a trainer, a volunteer, a village of people behind you who believe in you and are here to support you every step of the way. Welcome to the family. On behalf of the Southwest instructional staff, thank you for the devotion and patience you have put forth in the past two weeks, and congratulations to the November 2019 class of team training. I now would like to invite up instructor Stephanie Yoakum to the stage to present our teams. Okay, the first graduate I would like to introduce is Eli with facilitators Rick and Robin from San Diego, California. Eli is being placed with assistance dog Nikki II, a male black lab golden cross. Nikki is being presented by his puppy raisers, Mary and David Ellisberg from Denver, Colorado. graduate I would like to introduce is Emery with facilitator Megan from Temecula, California. Emery is being placed with assistance dog Skip II, a male black Labrador retriever. Skip is being presented by his puppy raiser Gail Simpson from Winchester, California. The next graduate I would like to introduce is Tim with facilitator Nicole from Aliso Viejo, California. Tim is being placed with assistance dog Yachty, a male yellow lab golden cross. 
Yachty was raised by Emma Styers from Little Rock, Arkansas, but Emma could not be here today, so presenting Yachty is Emma's mom, Cassie Bono. The next graduate I would like to introduce is Max with facilitators Michelle and Tony from Rancho Palos Verdes, California. Max is being placed with assistance dog Quincy III, a male golden retriever. Quincy is being presented by his puppy raiser Lisa Snowis from Torrance, California, accompanied by Jane Rieger. The next graduate I would like to introduce is Sherry from Russellville, Arkansas. Sherry is being placed with assistance dog Mitchell V, a male yellow lab golden cross. Mitchell is being presented by his puppy raiser, Krista Wokey from Tehachapi, California. The next graduate I would like to introduce is Kate from Vail, Colorado. Kate is being placed with assistance dog Beignet, a female golden retriever. Beignet is being presented by her puppy raisers, Angela Jackson Brunning from Costa Mesa, California, and Mindy Hurd from Huntington Beach, California. The next graduate I would like to introduce is Christy from Fullerton, California. Christy is being placed with assistance dog Nubbin, a female yellow lab golden cross. Nubbin is being presented by her puppy raisers, the Thomas family from Frederick, Colorado. The next graduate I would like to introduce is Pete from Santee, California. Pete is being placed with assistance dog Sydney II, a male yellow Labrador retriever. Sydney is being presented by his puppy raiser Scott Bordelais from Santa Ana, California. The next graduate I would like to introduce is Army veteran Private First Class Kelsey from Phoenix, Arizona. Kelsey is being placed with assistance dog Doc the Sixth, a male yellow lab golden cross. Doc is being presented by his puppy raisers, the Forest family from Pagosa Springs, Colorado. The next graduate I would like to introduce is Mike from Castle Rock, Colorado. Mike is being placed with assistance dog Legacy IV, a male yellow lab golden cross. Legacy is being presented by his puppy raisers, Robin and Stephen Hooper from Belgrade, Montana.
And the final graduate I would like to introduce is Lizelle from Camarillo, California. Lizelle is being placed with assistance dog Shadow the Seventh, a female black Labrador retriever. Shadow is being presented by her puppy raiser, Kayla Branscombe from La Quinta, California. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our class speaker, Lizelle. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lizelle, and I'm honored to be our class speaker. For the past two weeks, myself, my classmates, and our new assistance dogs have participated in team training. Team training is a long process in which we learn to handle our new assistance dogs. The dogs know what they're doing, now we just have to learn. <laughs> this includes lectures, hands-on learning, and more. Every evening, we had readings and quizzes to prepare us for the final in life with our new assistance dog. Throughout our two weeks of training, all of us had many emotions, nervousness, excitement, and more as we embark on this new life-changing journey. In the beginning, we practiced on carpet dog. Basically, an inanimate object um, covered in carpet that had a training collar and a leash. It was fun seeing our trainers wallow around holding carpet dog to teach us the ways to properly handle our dog. Then came pre-match day, the day many of us waited a long time for. Through the rotations of dogs we all worked with, we all had a few options that could have been our match. We all had to be patient and listen to the trainers to trust them and the process. They have done this a long time and knew what they were doing. In the end, it was very apparent and true. After pre-matches was the beginning of bonding and working with our dogs. Every day was something new and was a day we learned our dog's personality more and more. During times of group play, it was fun seeing the dog's goofy personalities appear as they played and chased each other around the room. Soon enough, our first field trip came around. We all went out to eat and the dogs did awesome. On our next day, we went to Target on a busy Saturday morning. <laughs> there are a lot of stares, oohs, and ahs, you know, the normal when you're taking a dog where they normally aren't. Down. Good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, we did our drills and soon went on a scavenger hunt. I'm sure many people looked at us confusingly while we tried to find the best pet vacuum or the cheapest Halloween costume on the day after Halloween. <laughs> Overall, team training has been a wonderful learning experience. Learning our new partners, making new friends, and of course, having a whole new CCI family. Sorry. <laughs> Um, thank you to everyone from volunteer puppy raisers, to trainers, and more. We now have this new leash on life with our new partners by our side. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am Simi Balter, and I have the privilege of being the executive director of the Southwest Region of Canine Companions for Independence. And 
my heart is overflowing, hopefully. <laughs> Everyone here can feel the love, and I think we'd all agree there's a lot of heart and hands that go into creating one of our teams. It's a really special place, and I have such a privilege to be part of this organization. And I was fortunate enough, it was day one of team training to open the door for Tim and his family, and I remember how excited Tim was, and he said, I'm here to get my dog. <laughs> and Tim has his dog, and, and his life has changed, and we're all a part of that. So thank you, everyone, for, for believing in this organization and for being part of this community. I want to take a, a moment to acknowledge there's a, some special people here with us today. Former national board member Ann Roberts, who started with the organization back in, I think, 1996. So thank you, Anne, for being here. Yeah. Former Southwest Region Board President, Peggy Wilson, thank you for being here today. And from our national office, Chief Development Officer, Barbara Barrow. And as I said earlier, her heart still belongs to Southwest. We know Barbara. We know it does. And Thanksgiving will soon be here, so it seems so appropriate to focus on our blessings and give thanks. So on behalf of Canine Companions for Independence, I want to express our abundant gratitude for all who make Canine Companions program so successful. We could not achieve our mission without your wonderful, wonderful support. We are profoundly indebted to our generous donors and supporters, many of whom are with us today, listed on the screen behind me and in your program. I'd like to take some time to thank some of those donors. Our November 2019 class sponsor, the Lyndon Root Dickinson Foundation. Dean and Jerda Kuntz, Mary West, William Gillespie, the Carl Judd Foundation, the Sharon D. Lund Foundation, the Van Kaninenberg Foundation, Bob Allen and Pamela Street, Susie and Vince Giovanazzo, Barbara Marks, Kathleen Smith, Laura Lasorda, Jane Gibbs, Finance of America Cares, Fortune Builders Incorporated, the Craig H. Nielsen Foundation, Joanne Randall, Jane Rieger, Delray Avocado, Disney Volunteers, Dr. Susan Ryan, Ellen and Stephen Jackson, Elizabeth Holman, Jennifer and Chris Halstead, Julie Chen Moonves, Kristen and Rick Smith, Lindsay and Craig Davis, Martha and Tony Combs, the Maureen, Maureen McGillian Sklar and Leland Sklar, the Rossler Design Group, Strauss Foundation, Tito's Handmade Vodka, and Yelp. We are grateful for your support. Each year, you fund our programs, and you enable us to provide these incredibly skilled and loving dogs to our graduates, free of charge. Today, nationally, we've graduated 62 new teams. Six veterans, 15 children, and 193 puppies have matriculated into professional training. We truly could not do what we do without your help. And if there are others, they've been named today, but the army of puppy raisers and volunteers who give so much on our behalf, thank you for gifting us your time, your finances, and love. Thank you to the extremely dedicated and talented Southwest staff. And finally, in this month of Thanksgiving, let us give thanks for all of these exceptional dogs that bring so much joy to all of our lives. In return for a simple pat on the head, dogs reward us with boundless appreciation and unconditional love. For them, thankfulness is a habit and gratitude is a way of life. They teach us valuable life lessons. Together, let's all give thanks that we have the privilege of being part of this magical organization. Thank you for joining us here today. And I hope to see you all at our next graduation ceremony. And it seems so appropriate because it's actually on Valentine's Day in February. In mix. Please remember to complete your interest forms and stop by the Canine Companions information table. Thank you for being part of our community. And enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much.